Piece by Dallas, make it hurt. Welcome back to a week seven DraftKings lineup edition of the Deep Cover Podcast. I'm your host, Kerry Stevenson. Uh, like I always say, shout out to my boys, my co-hosts, Mike Crawford, Chris Aguilera. Uh, if you're a new listener, uh, do us a huge favor. Uh, like this video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're trying to bring a lot of great content um, for you guys. And, you know, those likes and those subscribes help us out a great deal. So uh, do that on the way in. Uh, there was no lineup last week. I was on the mend, uh, feeling a lot better now, and I'm ready to get back to it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get the ball rolling on week seven. Um, just kind of talk through some things. Um, so you know how I like to do. I like to identify that primary stat first and foremost. And, you know, this week is, you know, there's a handful of games that are the best games. They're super obvious games. And, you know, they make for super obvious stacks. Uh, so, um, being that I'm not really crazy about pivoting to some of these lesser games, um, uh, it means I'm going to have to try to get different with these, um, with these stacks. Uh, so, um, right off the top here, I'm going to roll, um, with my quarterback and, uh, this week I'm going with Matt Stafford. If I can find him on the screen. There we go, Stafford. So I'm rolling with Stafford this week. Uh, obviously, you know, great matchup, uh, great infrastructure offensively, playing at a um, you know a good pace, uh, weapons all over the place. Uh, really like his um, his chances of, of putting together uh, you know a real strong game. Um, but here's where we kind of meet that first kind of uh, ability to try to find a leverage point. So, you know, with this here, um, Cup, Cooper Cup is going to be that, that primary stacking partner for a lot of people, uh, rightfully so. Uh, Daryl Henderson is um, uh, gaining a lot of buzz, and he's a great play this week. So he's going to be popular. Uh, you know, also makes a lot of sense, rightfully so. Um, you know, his, his matchup is amazing. Um, but, you know, if we're going to do this, we got to try to figure out a way to be different. So, uh, first way I'm going to be different, I'm going to plug in Robert Woods here. Uh, 6,400 price tag, a guy that's on the field every every um, snap pretty much. I mean, he plays more snaps than Cooper Cup. Um, had that 12-catch game two weeks ago. Uh, came back down to earth, only five targets um, last week. Uh, but, you know, in a game like this with a 33-point um, team total, um you want the guys that are going to be out on the field. And so Robert Woods has that chance uh, at 2,000 less than Cooper Cup uh, to be that guy uh, that can come through for you. Um, and so obviously with Stafford being a guy that's not going to get you any rushing production, um, you know, you want to try to double stack him to kind of maximize uh, the play. Uh, so in doing that, I'm going to go um, down the board a little bit, and I'm going to plug in uh, Deshaun Jackson here. You know, I, I understand this is a risky pet play. Uh, he's only 3,400, but there's some risk there. Uh, he's a guy that's not really playing a lot of snaps. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're monitoring his snaps, keeping them low. You know, he's probably going to play 16, 18, 20 snaps, something like that. Um, but what we're banking on in this situation uh, is for him to get those chunk plays. Uh, you know, he's playing, um, you know, not a lot of snaps, uh, but they're 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 trying to get him involved downfield. So uh, the hope here is like he did in week, I believe it was week three and week five um, is just he can hit on, uh, you know, a long bomb, you know, 60, 70 yard touchdown. Um, you know, I would take one, but I would love more than one. Give me a couple of those plays. I think week three, he had three for 120. Um, I'm not sure if he scored that week, but, you know, that, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for those those deep um, shots downfield. Um, hate to remind Ravens fans of this, but um, Marquise Brown, Hollywood, uh, the same defense. He smoked them a few different times downfield, uh, just didn't come up with the, uh, with the ball. 
uh, to make those plays, but that, that shows you this secondary is susceptible uh, to big plays downfield. Uh, so that's kind of the hope here. Uh, you know, if we're kind of fitting Cooper Cup in this lineup, uh, we want to try to get, um, you know, multiple bites at the apple of, of finding somebody that can kind of uh, leverage that. So, you know, Robert Woods has, you know, a strong game, and then Deshaun Jackson can get us a, you know, a 70 yard touchdown. Uh, and Cooper Cup kind of, uh, you know, does uh, yeoman's work kind of game. Um, you know, I think we're in good shape there. Um, so, you know, that's that's the hope here in this. You know, maybe we can get three, four touchdowns from Stafford, and and hopefully Woods um, and and Deshaun Jackson can get uh, three of those. So, uh, that's where we're going here. Uh, now, you know, I like to run stuff back and I actually had um, TJ Hawkinson in in this lineup as the run back. Um, but it, it always felt kind of funny because I don't really like the the run back options for Detroit this week um, too much. And then I got to thinking about how the Rams deploy Jalen Ramsey a lot in the slot. And, uh, you know, with, I, with arguably the worst receiving core in the league with the with the alliance uh what's to stop the rams from sticking ramsey on hawkinson in, in high leverage situations so for me uh, i don't get too caught up in you know those wide receiver cornerback matchups um too much but when you're talking about a guy like ramsey who we've seen um been able um to hold the, the best of the best receivers in check when you're talking about him um, you know, potentially, and this is just me speculating. I haven't seen anything or heard anything um, that that's what's going to happen. But I'm just kind of thinking out loud, you know, Ramsey, um, if they put Ramsey on um, Hawkinson in some of these high leverage situations and Hawkinson is battling through an injury right now. So, you know, he's not even 100 percent himself. Uh, this just seems like a, a, a situation where, um, you know, I, I, I just kind of want to go somewhere else. So. Uh, I'm going to be uh, unorthodox in the way I do things and opt not to uh, to stack this lineup. Uh, I'm, t- I'm sorry, not to um, to run it back with someone. And so at tight end this week, uh, I'm going to go with Dallas Goddard. Um, just the easy play, man. Um, you know, finally got Zach Ertz out of there, uh, out of his way, so to speak. Um, and now he's got this matchup with the Raiders and they've allowed the second most targets to tight ends and the third most uh, TDs to the tight end position. So uh, really like Goddard, really strong play uh, this week. Uh, so, you know, plugged him in at, at tight end. Uh, so now, um, so, um, you know, hit these running backs. Um, let's see. So running back, I really like this week. Um and I'm going to plug him into this first spot, is uh, James Conner. Uh, like him as uh, leverage to Kyler Murray and uh, DeAndre Hopkins. Uh, in this game, uh, they're over a two TD favorite, I think like 17-point favorite, something like that. Um, he's their uh, clear goal line back. Uh, he's got, he's going to be the guy that's going to be uh, killing the clock uh, later in the games if this game get out, gets out of hand. And this game does have a very <laughs> high probability of getting out of hand. Uh, so Connor is a guy that's, uh, you know, an easy multiple touchdown upside kind of guy here. And he could, you know, possibly get some extra volume. Like he could push for 20 carries in this game. You know, if this game gets out of hand as quickly as um, it's slated to to do. Uh, so really, really like plugging uh, Connor in. He's going to be a guy I'm going to be um, very interested in. Trying to figure out to what extent, because it doesn't seem like Kyler Murray is, um, you know, doesn't seem like he's getting a whole lot of exposure. So, you know, we'll see how things go. But uh, I'll definitely be mixing in some Connor uh, this week. Um, you know, interesting kind of uh, leverage play there. Um, and then I'm going to correlate this play. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, you know, plug my defense now, um, defense in now, I'm sorry. And I'm going to plug that Cardinals defense in. Um, so I do believe in the RB um, defense stacks, uh, even though I don't do uh, them as much in large field stuff for some reason. Um, um, but I, I do believe in them. And this is one I'm, I'm, I'm particularly inclined to do so in this situation 
uh, because we have another running back in this equation. And, you know, that's Chase Edmonds. And he's going to be a guy that's going to be involved more on passing downs. Uh, so if I'm betting on Connor, uh, that means I'm betting on the Cardinals playing from way ahead, him grinding out the clock, him getting opportunities to punch in touchdowns. Uh, and so that lends itself to a Cardinals defense being able to uh, pin their ears back, rush the quarterback against a, a, a offensive line that's missing Laramie Tunsil. Um, so, uh, you know, really love that correlation here. And plus, um, 3100 is, a, you know, pretty good price considering the situation. Uh, normally in a situation like this, you would see the defense, you know, is like 4K or more. Uh, so, uh, you know, really, really good price there for that Cardinals defense. So, like plugging them in there. Um, going to move uh, move along to this other running back spot. And i um, going to tap into the game of the week. You know, the game of this slate, without question, is that KC-Tennessee uh, game. Uh, everybody's going to go. Um, Mahomes and Hill or Kelsey with a cheap piece, uh, you know, maybe a Hartman or something like that. And, you know, a Tennessee run back or Derrick Henry with a KC receiver or Tannehill with a double stack uh, with a KC run back. You know, a lot of people are going to do a lot of those different things, um, maybe including me. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, I really want to find um, ability to get in on this game, get a piece of it. But, be different in doing so. Uh, so I'm going to go Daryl Williams here. Uh, he got the work last week that we want to see uh, CH get. Got most of the rushing work. I think he had like 20, 21 of the 24 running back carries. I also had four targets. And, um, you know, he's not a needle mover um, from a talent perspective, uh, but he's solid. You know, he's a guy that they trust um, to protect the ball. They trust him in pass protection. Um, and, you know, regardless of what you think about um, the Chiefs as, as far as a, a team, as far as what they're doing record-wise and some of those things, uh, they've been kind of down bad because of the defense and because of, you know, silly turnovers. Uh, but don't get it twisted. This is still an elite offense. And if you're giving um, a running back 20 touches in this offensive environment, um, Daryl Williams, Daryl Hannah, Daryl Strawberry, I, I don't care. It, it, it's going to bear some production, uh, you know, with, with this kind of infrastructure around it. So uh like going Daryl Williams here as the, you know, different way to get tapped into this game. Uh, so I'm going to plug him in here. Um, for my last uh, wide receiver spot, uh, I'm going to, um, again, tap into this game. Um, and so I'm going to go A.J. Brown. Um, A.J. Brown, this play, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, is uh, kind of self-serving to me at this point, um, trying to be optimistic and light my candles and do that kind of stuff um, because I drafted him in all four of my redraft leagues this year and hasn't been going very well <laughs> to start. But, um, um, you know, holding out hope that this is the start of kind of, uh, you know, like a redemption um, for him. And so, you know, what better way to start against uh, – you know, a defense as, as down as bad as the Kansas City is. I think 27th in um, uh, uh, defensive uh, EPA. Um, and if you look at A.J. Brown last week, I mean, I know Julio was out, um, but, you know, even with the BGs, he had seven catches for 91 yards on nine targets. Um, so like his chances, man, to, to put together a good game here, um, it sounds like he's going to be really, really popular, um, but it also sounds like there's a chance that Julio might play after looking like there was no chance he was going to play. It looks like it, it may be possible he might sneak in. So uh, hopefully Julio does play and kind of pulls down um, A.J. Brown's popularity a bit because I think A.J. Brown is pretty locked in um, from a target share standpoint. And, you know, if this is a game that we expect, there um, to be points um, that need to be scored, you know, them playing from behind. Um, A.J. Brown should be looking at another eight to ten targets at least in this game. Uh, so, uh, you know, with their narrow distribu distribution, they're not throwing to a lot of guys in Tennessee. So, uh, like A.J. Brown this week, uh, crossing my fingers uh, that, you know, he, he has one of those big-time games um, 
and and kind of um, you know gets uh, gets back on track here, um, you know, for the second half of the season. Uh, so, uh, like AJ Brown there, and then with my final piece of this lineup, I'm gonna go with the guy. Um, it's not coming up en- uh, enough in conversation for my liking this week. And that's DJ Moore. You know, plug him into the flex. Uh, DJ Moore, um, without um, Christian McCaffrey uh, in the lineup, um, he feels like a lot for double-digit targets weekly. Uh, the offense was a great last week. Um, I think a lot of that had to do with their offensive line just not being great uh, generally. Um, you know, they're kind of struggling there. And the Vikings defense, uh, you know, they have some some guys up front. Uh, second rank uh, uh, adjusted sat rate in football for them. Uh, but now you get the Giants defense that, that hasn't really rushed the passer well this year. Uh, they're the 12th worst um, in the adjusted sat rate. And then um, their defense is giving up the f- uh, fourth most DK points per game to the receiver position. Uh, so really like uh, more uh, this week. Um, you know, again, like I said, uh, even last week, I think he had like 13 targets last week, was getting some deep targets. Um, Patrick Peterson was on them for most of the game. Uh, I joked that before the season when Patrick Peterson switched to that number seven, it was kind of like the 30 is the new 20, you know, trying to trying to hang on to some youth kind of thing. Um, but he, he, he's been pretty good for them. You know, um, he's played well. So, uh, you know, that was uh, – uh, not an easy matchup for DJ Moore, but, you know, 13 targets, um, you know, still show some production there. Um, and, uh, you know, the price tag is a solid one. So I uh, really like uh, DJ Moore there. So closing out the lineup with Moore, um, that's going to finish things up for this week. Again, I uh, really appreciate you guys checking this out. Um, like, subscribe, comment, um, and um, good luck in week seven and go out there and get you some bread. I'll see y'all next week.